Urinary leakage when you cough or sneeze or exercise or do aerobics is called stress urinary incontinence. The stress refers not to any psychological or emotional stress, but to physical stress, the jostling or the, uh, the moving around. And um, in order to understand it, you need to understand how the bladder and the, and the sphincter usually work. So I'll, I'll try to show that to you in a very easy to understand manner. So if you make a fist and you put and you put it in front of you and you stick your thumb out, the your your fist is the bladder and your thumb is like the urethra. Around the urethra are some muscles called the sphincter. So the sphincter simply grasps the urethra uh, and that's what that, that that stays closed all the, the time. Ordinarily when you urinate, the bladder contracts and the urethra opens and the sphincter opens. When you're not trying to urinate, the sphincter should stay closed all the time and no matter how much you cough or sneeze or jump or do anything, that sphincter should really stay closed. What happens with stress incontinence most of the time is that the sphincter muscle is a bit weak. So when you cough or sneeze, it, there's a little bit of movement and when it moves, the sphincter is loose so it opens up a little bit and the urine leaks out. That's called stress or sphincteric incontinence. Now, from a strictly scientific st standpoint, there's another cause of stress incontinence because, because the, the, the stress refers to the coughing, sneezing aspect of it. Sometimes when that happens, when you cough or sneeze, it actually makes the bladder contract and you start to urinate without control. That's also technically stress incontinence, but we usually use the word stress incontinence to mean a sphincter weakness. So how do we diagnose it? Because before we treat it, we need to diagnose it. Well, uh, I always think it's a good idea for a patient to keep a diary for 24 hours where they record the time and the amount of each urination. And when it comes to, when it comes to uh, sphincter, any kind of incontinence, uh, we recommend something called a pad test where you simply wear a pad to protect yourself and then bring that pad with you the next day. The doctor can just either weigh it or uh, just simply look at it to get some sense of how much urine you leak. But the most important aspect is simply to examine you with a full bladder. So you'll come into the office, it will wait until your bladder is comfortably full, the doctor will have you lie down uh, on, on a table, put your legs in stirrups, uh, and uh, so that your hips are flexed and your knees are flexed. And then he'll simply look at the vagina when you cough and sneeze. And if he sees a spurt of urine coming out, or even worse than that, then that's, how, that's the diagnosis of stress incontinence. Now, there's a lot of other tests we can do to uh, give us more information about the specifics of it. But if you have the complaint that you leak urine during these physical exercise kinds of things, and the doctor sees that you leak urine when you cough or sneeze, that stress incontinence. What to do about it? Well, there's a lot of things you can do about it, and the treatments are very, very effective. Uh, there are very simple kind of treatments, behavioral approaches, and uh, that at the one end, and at the other end are surgical treatments. But no matter which treatment you choose, you can almost always be treated to your own level of satisfaction. For patients who want to be dry all of the time, the surgeries work almost all the time in terms of either improving you very much or actually curing you. And if you don't want surgery or you want to try some, uh, some simpler things or to manage it yourself, there are a lot of behavioral approaches that can be used that are very often based on this bladder diary. Uh, but no matter, no matter what approach you choose, rest assured that in the hands of a competent physician, your stress urinary incontinence can always be treated to your own level of satisfaction.